Welcome back everybody. It's Tuesday, August 15th, 2023. Born on this date, in 1925, Rose Maddox, singer, songwriter, and fiddle player with pioneering country group Maddox Brothers and Rose, born in Boaz to a family of sharecroppers before hopping trains to California. Also in 1937, former Congressman Ronnie G. Flippo of Florence, and in 1944, R&B singer Frederick Knight of Birmingham. Let's update the redistricting hearing mark the passing of a judge, lawyer, and educator, and check in on the latest effort to help Mobile Bay oysters. I'm Mike Morgan, and we're down in Alabama. One of the federal judges at a hearing on Alabama's proposed congressional redistricting wanted to know whether the state legislature intentionally disregarded the court's ruling to create a second district that gives black voters an opportunity to elect candidates who most black voters might support, reports AL.com's Mike Kaysen. Of course, that means Democrats. The Republican-led redrawing of the district map includes a district that increased the voting age black population from 30% to 40%, but a look at voting trends suggests that a Democrat would be very unlikely to win District 2. Alabama Solicitor General Edmund LaCour said District 2 was as close as legislators could get to a so-called opportunity district for black voters while still following redistricting guidelines. Now, if the court decides to block the new map, it'll have its cartographer draw a map for the 2024 election. We're not sure when we'll find that out, but the judges have set a Saturday morning deadline for any additional filings. Former judge and dean of Samford University's Cumberland School of Law, John Carroll, has passed away, reports AL.com's Howard Koplowitz. Carroll was a graduate of Cumberland and served a long tenure as the school's dean from 2001 to 2014. He was a U.S. magistrate judge in the Middle District of Alabama for nearly 15 years and served as legal director of the Southern Poverty Law Center from 74 to 84. Sanford University's President Beck A. Taylor confirmed Carroll's passing on Monday. We have more news from the Oyster Beat. Folks behind a privately funded effort are hoping to improve the oyster habitat in Mobile Bay by hauling 6,500 tons of rocks down from North Alabama, reports AL.com's Lawrence Specker. The limestone rocks are being used in the Cedar Point Beach Oyster Restoration Project, which is focusing on 77 acres of Heron Bay. Oysters have grown in that spot before, and there are oyster reefs nearby. The hope here is that oyster larvae will catch hold of the hard limestone rock and grow reefs there once again. Vulcan Materials provided limestone from Tuscumbia. Cooper Marine provided more than $150,000 to transport it. The Alabama Wildlife Federation put up $100,000 to spread it in the bay. That was matched by the Coastal Land Trust, the Jernigan Foundation, the JL Bedsole Foundation, and Power South. Oyster populations have declined over the decades for multiple reasons. Their benefits are well known. They filter the bay's water, their reefs add to the sea life habitat, and they're great raw on a soda cracker with a shot of crystal sauce. Thank y'all so much for listening. We're going to be back here again tomorrow. Until then, y'all come on by and see us on the internet at AL.com.